it, asks, it says, tell me, write me a song about Biden. And would you believe that song uh, that AI not only not refused, it wrote a song, it was the most flowery song, as a, almost as if Joe Biden is like Christ incarnate or, uh, or um, a dear leader from North Korea. It was that flowery, you know, he's our leader, this and that, just the, uh, and so this is what, you might ask your question, why did AI uh, discriminate against one person, but chose a side and wrote, can somebody kind of answer how ChatGPT made that determination? It's influenced by the information being input by you know the man behind the curtain. The people. Man behind the curtain. In this case, ChatGPT4 is what we call crowdsourced AI. Now, crowdsourced terminology is very positive. When we used to be inventors, uh, people would have to go uh, invent something and then um, n just kind of knock one door at a time, say, hey, would you please inv invest in it, would you please? So crowdsource, uh, the easiest example is people think about crowdsourcing in terms of investment. You build something and then you crowdsource your money and many different people, but let's work that term into AI. What that means is ChatGPT bases all its understanding on what's out there in the ether. So it reads all the articles, it reads all the um, websites, it reads all the uh, Wikipedia pages as if it's a human. And so ChatGPT4, that's how it created, created its um, intelligence. Therein lies the problem. And that term, uh, John, if you have it on the slides uh, up ahead, uh, forgive me, but uh, th thank you team, but um, the concept called poisoning of the AI. This is a very important, uh, If just again, you should write it down, when you get home, Google it, um, bang it, whatever, the favorite, or duck, duck, go it, um, poisoning of the AI. It's a very important concept, because if something is crowdsourced, what if there is bad information being fed, fed from that crowdsource? So let's say, for a second, let's assume that online and all the articles that ChatGPT4 was choosing to read, they were more left-leaning, let's say, for a second. Now we get to trace, okay, that's why ChatGPT4 uh, declined uh, writing a song about Trump again. I, I, I haven't written a song about Trump. I haven't written a song about any politician. So it's not the point that it did or did not, it's about why. And that why part, therein lies our security questions and our protections, how we protect ourselves from this tool that could be very powerful. So um, another thing I, should, I would encourage you to go uh, research when we get home is chat GPT-4, or uh, let's say chat GPT versus Wolfram Alpha. Has anybody used Wolfram Alpha on before? W-O-L-F-O-R-M, Wolfram Alpha. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, can you Google it? <laughs> what the exact, I wanna make sure that you guys can have the right spelling. So Wolfram Alpha. W-O-L-F-R-M. Okay, W-O-L-F-R-M, uh, Wolfram Alpha. Um, so Google Wolfram Alpha versus ChatGPT. So uh, and the next story is very important. It kind of dr drills this point that I'm trying to come across, uh, get across from uh, to us um, very well. Somebody asked, "How far is Japan from ChatGPT4?" It gave the most believable answer. It says something like 7,000 kilometers or something like that. It gave this whole paragraph of, of explanation that how why it's located 7,000 uh, kilometers away. Can somebody tells me, tell me if that was right or wrong? It's wrong. So, if you when you Google that article, uh, Wolfram Alpha versus ChatGPT, you'll see that when you put that same question from Wolfram Alpha, it actually showed um, the correct answer. So Wolfram Alpha is a, a um, what shall we say, arithmetic or it is a computed AI. So Wolfram Alpha and ChatGPT are two opposite arms of AI. Wolfram Alpha bases all its artificial intelligence on well-accepted, uh, arithmetic-based, um, uh, science-based intelligence. ChatGPT is a crowdsourced AI, hence it's more, uh, more attractive and all that stuff, but this gave a believable answer how far Japan is, but this one was correct. 
So when you ask Wolfram Alpha, how far is Japan from the US, it, it gave the correct answer, but this one felt more believable. And this is where, again, as IT professionals, we must be careful. We must be careful about our children, uh, must be careful about the products that are interacting with our, our, um, our communities, that at what point the truth, we, nobody knows what truth is. And that's the scary part about AI, that if it can not only lie, not only uh, bend the truth for its own good, not only pick sides like we talked about, it can affect the minds of our children, our, um, our fellows, our brothers and sisters in the communities. So, and at what point we, the truth just becomes so obfuscated that we don't even know what truth is. So that's the downside of AI, and that's where it comes security, that's where it comes uh, our, so I mean, I, again, I realize we're ta gonna talk about security, but I prefer if we zoom out a little bit and talk philo philosophically you know, about these things, because if you don't understand the philosophical aspects and why should we secure, why should security be in place? Why should regulations be even in, uh, in place? So that's the last part. John, what's the next slide? Uh, I, my, I don't have it in my... I don't think we hit this one yet. Uh, spreading attacks over time, attacking... So, I mean, I'll, I guess um, I'll kind of read a couple of these things and then we'll go. Uh, so when I say we won't know what truth is, um, that's where I'm uh, thankful for the team for putting, creating deep fakes and impersonating individuals. What's happening is somebody recent asked, recently asked AI, hey, give me a picture of such and such politician's wife pregnant. And it was really scary because uh, people started dropping pictures underneath created by AI that that person's wife was pregnant at such and such time. Just so happens that person was not pregnant during that time. But at that point, at what point those deep fake um, images are distorting the truth and when you flood the internet with these uh, with these um, untruths and with these um, and these false pictures at what point not only in words but in images we are really polluting and um, uh, the uh, ether out there and our kids are consuming this stuff when they go and ask again the most simple questions uh, how far is Japan um, and if it's wrong but kids are going to say, no, I just passed, got an A last week with a paper that Chat GPT 4 wrote. Sure as heck, Japan is only, so it's almost like we're going backwards. What if AI, Chat GPT 4 decides the earth is flat? So that's, that's the kind of questions we need to really understand that at what point, if we trust so much in one source, at what point it's, uh, it's going to be a problem. Go, John, go to the next one. Uh, popular cybersecurity threats, and this is where we'll go a little bit more tech talk. Uh, advanced persistent threats, uh, deep fake attacks, we already talked about it, AI powered uh, malware, and I'll just, you know, DDoS attacks, everybody knows the traditional uh, kind of uh, stuff that happens, <coughs> phishing. Uh, phishing is your boss, uh, there was a phishing campaign, somebody's boss had power to log into an admin site behind the scenes, but they click on an email that wasn't supposed to be. DDoS attack is that I said something China didn't like, next thing you know, China sends all the data traffic uh, to my servers, overwhelm the servers, and the servers are crippled, that's DDoS attacks, uh, denial of service attacks. Um, and, but I want to focus on this screen again, uh, on this slide, on the AI-powered malware. So what's happening is, um, I mentioned earlier that ChatGPT can now write code. So you go to ChatGPT and you say, hey, write me a um, software that uh, moves this camera from there to here. Uh, maybe this is a motorized, uh, uh, let me get a different example, um, something uh, that we can kind of test in this room. Let's say we ask the a AI to um, project something on the screen uh, for me. I I'm standing here, I didn't build the presentation, I forgot, I slept in. I show up to this presentation, I said, ChatGPT, create a presentation for me on um, AI and security. It will create the best presentation quickly, uh, but from security perspective, what does it embed into it? Could it embed a phishing campaign in it? So because it's a crowdsourced AI, because, and if it's crowdsourced, what if some political actor, some state level actor, some bad actor floods the internet with a certain malware in hopes that as ChatGPT learns from crowdsourced AI, it actually learns 
as part of its learning a malware piece of code that when somebody asks it to write a software or something, it's already embedded into it. So that is a scary uh, uh, moment of, uh, you know, sort of a food for thought kind of moment that um, at what point we don't even know um, and I used to give this analogy when I was trying to wake people up to cloud and all these things, that age-old example, you turn on the faucet, water comes out. The craziest example is that one day somebody will say, no, no but, uh, you turn on the faucet, no water is coming out. But I think there's a scarier uh, scenario. You turn on the faucet, you yesterday had water, you, you know, cooked your food with it. Today, you turn on the faucet, same thing, but there's something in the water. I like to talk in philosophical terms. Um, you turn on the faucet, it's still water is coming out. We just don't know what's in that water. And we can't tell what's in it. We're still thinking it as this normal water, but really it has something bad in it uh, that could destroy uh, your health. Well, that's the pro problem we're facing with uh, AI powered malware that if it floods the internet with a malware, AI will then. Um, let's just say in the battle of AIs, another AI picks it up. Uh, you go, Jillian, you go say, hey, build me this, this, this. It, and malware is already embedded into it. So how do you, so this is again, as security professionals, as you guys um, go and sort of uh, carry out these um, exercises, keep in mind that you're going to have to uh, shore up your understanding on AI and um, AI powered uh, um, crowdsourced uh, information. And so John, we'll go to the next slide. Um, how do we combat it, uh, combat it? And right after this, I'll go to the last slide and we'll just do, open up for some questions and answers. Uh, the way, uh, again, I'm a professional, uh, I would say, uh, you know, the silliest one or the self-serving one, I'll say, please come talk to us. Uh, we, you know, we'll, uh, we'll hope that you become our customer and we can serve you by helping you protect your school, your uh, organization, your outfit from AI based threats. So that's the self-serving one, but it's also an honest one because we do this for corporate America day in and day out. We use AI to help companies protect against various threats. We use AI to help companies we use AI to help companies uh, perform their functions better. So at the end of this talk, if you talk to someone later, um, uh, you know, just uh, just let us have the honor of serving you uh, or in terms of young minds who are learning about this stuff. Um, I, one of my average age in our hirees at, at our uh, company is uh, about Jillian's age. Uh, you know, 20 some, uh, 20 something young minds. So a lot of our uh, workers in our company are young minds. I have a huge heart to help young minds uh, sort of be on the front, uh, sort, sort of the cutting edge of all this chat. So uh, come see us. Uh, if you're just a young person that says, hey, the, this talk made me think a little bit about where this stuff lives, who controls it, how to protect it, come see us. I love to mentor uh, in any way. And that kind of, you know, we save a lot of uh, money. Uh, this, this is not just a slide. When we use AI for good, we can go into large companies and uh, one of our customers had 30,000 pieces of mail that shows up uh, monthly in their building. They're a large um, insurance provider. And so the AI that we wrote for them, it was the AI models that we created for them, allow them to read that mail without reading that mail. So mail comes in, AI reads that in mail, it already sorts it, it already puts in the right uh, area. And uh, so there's the kind of positive things that we can really help you with, uh, even in security aspects of it. Um, I made a choice, we made a choice as a company, very, um, very, um, I'm trying to find a word, very, thought through a mindset that if AI is the next frontier, as a company, as Gladius and 1A, we better be on the cutting edge of that. We better have the smartest minds. So the highest, uh, heaviest hiring that we're doing right now is anybody who's into data science and AI, we're hiring heavy on it. Because I wanna be on the cutting edge. So when you guys have issues or problems or you need a partner to help you with, um, you know, um, I'm so thankful for a VIP um, and, uh, 
Mr. Chris and Mark that we interact with, and that partners like when we connect with these kind of partners who are always serving, already serving communities, we're going to be able to do these kind of things for your organizations where we use AI for good, but also come in and show you where AI can actually hurt your customers. Because we've been doing same same thing day in and day out, but. Um, we can help. Uh, I think I'll stop right there. And uh, remind me your name again. Elora. Elora, are you uh, part of the team that's? Uh... I'm with VIP. Okay, yes. perfect. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, I almost thought for a second that uh, you know you work here in this building. <laughs> so good. So I will open up. Um, let's do some question and answers. Uh, let's see. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Anybody has questions? We'll go one one by one. Comments? Yes, sir. I heard about the chat GPT that, what's it called? That since there's all the cloud and that a lot of the stuff that it generated, I was hearing that a lot of the stuff that it made was actually stolen from a lot of people that like wrote it online and then published it and then they're just using their words as its own. Is that like. Uh, yeah, that's one way to ascribe uh, theft is uh, at the worst sense of the uh, reading of the situation, you could call it theft. But because it's kind of like that thing uh, people say uh, in, in politics, people always said, hey, pol your whole pol political campaign is going to die if uh, you did something wrong in your lifetime. Obama kind of, uh, in a positive way, broke that mindset. He wrote a book about what he did before he became the president. So if no other political party can say, oh, look what Obama did, he's like, no, I wrote about it. I used to do this, I don't do that anymore, but I wrote. So that's where ChatGPT does a really good job. They're saying, hey, we didn't steal. We're saying we're a crowdsourced AI. We're saying that my intelligence comes from sources. So when you go in and with your IP uh, protections, you go in and say, we're gonna sue ChatGPT. Uh, again, it's, it's yet to be seen, but nobody has successfully sued, the, sued them because they don't consider it theft. When somebody comes out and says, <laughs> essentially cite the sources, so to speak, and said, hey, um, I'm a crowdsourced AI. So very good comment and question on that. It's truly that. Anybody else? All right, well, I will say, uh, very important uh, a team, uh, family of uh, IT professionals and young minds. I say, uh, hopefully by the end of this talk, you we leave with a few questions on AI and uh, we'll be here, Jillian, John, myself, and if you have any questions, John, you have? Just one point I thought would be interesting to touch on too, uh, phishing attacks and then how AI can make phishing attacks look more real than they used to and even people who are trained on Oh yeah, uh, to the trained eye, uh, it's um, what John is expressing is uh, f phishing attacks were created by a human back in the day, but now AI creates them. It's it, you forget about you know having the usual uh, handbook. You can throw it out because it will create because it uses all the intelligence that out there. It will probably create the phishing attempts or mechanisms that are almost untraceable. So um, that's that's the that's the challenge of that. Yeah. Well, team, thank you so much. Mark, I'll give it back to you. I'll say um, thank you for your time.